Hola todos, what's up? It's your girl Segment Divine and today we're going to be learning about how to set up a simple altar. So an altar can be used for many reasons. It can be used as a sacred space. It can be used as a meditation space where you manifest and most popularly, it is to connect with and receive guidance from your benevolent ancestors, your higher self and spirit. Basically, all the people on your spirit team, both known and unknown, that wish you best on this spiritual journey. The reasoning I've used my altar has changed a lot over the years. I've had an altar now for about three years. The way it's looked has changed dramatically and many times over the past three years as a result of moving, of having different things, of having different energy levels to keep up with an altar. So it really just depends. Now on the internet you'll probably see lots and lots of different regulations on how an altar should and should not look and I just want to encourage us all to take these with a grain of salt because ultimately what's most important about your altar is that it resonates with you. Now, of course, if you are a part of a closed circle that has specific rules about what the altar should look like, then of course follow that. But if you are just free on this path trying to figure out what works best for you, try to take a step back and ask yourself, is this something I want to follow in my journey? Because a lot of people tell you what it should and should not do, and instead of offering a solution for how to make it work for your life, all they do is try to shame and guilt you into not being able to follow these rules. If we're trying to break away from these overcritical religious systems that have enslaved us before, then we must make sure that we are actually treating ourselves with kindness and compassion and allowing ourselves to be free. If you can't do something in this video, make your altar work for you. Let's say you don't have any seashells. Maybe all you have is one candle and that's all you can do on your altar. Then let that be that. Do what you can. Don't overburden yourself with trying to make it perfect or right because the truth is there is no right answer. For my altar, the first thing you notice is that it is not on a wooden table. A lot of people have theirs on a wooden table, however, I don't have a wooden table. I have to use what I have. And for me, it is a storage box. So this entire box actually contains all of my spiritual things. So I'm gonna take you along for the ride, so to speak, in this video as I set up my altar. I recently redecorated my room. If you are interested in learning how I organize my candle making space, I will go ahead and link it down below. But as a result of changing everything around, it gave me an opportunity to rearrange my altar. So I thought it would be a perfect time to go ahead and show you guys. So the way I set up my altar is a mix between uh, the elemental system or using the different elements and having them present on your altar and the sacred woman altar setup. And the reason why it's a mix is because they have a lot of overlapping guidelines. So that's why I say mine is kind of like a mix match of both. But for this video, to keep it simple, we're just going to focus on using the elements and having them present in your altar. If you are interested in learning more about the Sacred Woman one, let me know down below. So if you are setting your altar up with the elements, the five elements you will have present is water, earth, fire, air, and spirit. Now, as I said before, this is really just a guideline. So how those elements are present in your altar might look very different. For water, a lot of people put a glass of water for their ancestors, or uh, I have a seashell that I will be putting on there too to represent the element of water. For air, people can do a candle, or that can also work with um, the element of fire. Ooh, another thing that people use to represent the element of air is feathers. For earth, you can use crystals. Like, there's a lot of different things that you can use that will represent that sense. And for spirit, again, that can also be crystals, or a very popular way is to have a photo or a drawing of your spirit guide. Let's say you don't have any photos of your ancestors or your spirit guide. Well, go ahead and draw one out or print one out. Like, don't think so much about these rules being hard and fast. Like, take them as guidance and do what you can with those guidelines. And for me, I usually have items representing one or two elements, not just one. And that's just because I have a smaller area to work with. So having one item 
count for multiple things is great for me and i also don't always have all of the five elements present on my altar sometimes it changes around like i said even within myself the way my altar looks fluctuates or changes and that's okay because as long as it resonates with you the person whose altar it is then it's totally fine and then once you have those five elements you can do extra or other personal touches that are things that mean a lot to you or your ancestors so let's go ahead and begin setting up my altar i've gathered all of my things we're gonna go through setting it up so to begin i'm gonna take my white cloth i felt called to do white today and the beautiful thing about this one is that it has a bunch of of cowrie shells at the bottom so again bringing in that element of water a lot of the things i have come from the dollar tree or thrifted and that's just because when i began with my altar i was in college and i really couldn't afford many things so I had to make do with what I had. And that's why I tell you guys, if you're just starting out, man, like do not be so hard on yourself, especially if you can't afford to have super expensive crystals or super expensive things on here, like statues and figurines. Like, man, it's okay. It's okay. Do not let this capitalistic society make you feel like your altar is not good enough. If all you have to offer is a candle and a kiss to your ancestors and your spirit guides every time you enter and leave the house or pass your altar, if that is all you can do, then that is all that you need to do. If you choose to do a cloth, you can choose to do a color that corresponds with maybe a chakra you're working with or a color you just really like. Maybe you like fun prints. This was on my altar for a very long time too. So it doesn't really matter, but some people are intentional with the cloth that they use. And if you don't want to use a cloth at all, you don't have to either. So it's important before we put things on our altar to cleanse them. I like to cleanse my things physically, like with some dish soap or some disinfectant. And then I like to clean them spiritually. So that's either by using incense. I have today with me a pot of water with sea salt in it and pepper. There's many ways you can cleanse it. If you use any other cleansing thing, like maybe a crystal or whatever, all of those things will work perfectly. So I have here with me my pot. And just to show you guys, I have here a shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and dunk that in. And maybe you'd like to mentally or verbally say a affirmation or prayer to cleanse and clear this item so that it may be on your altar. And then I'll go ahead and dry that off. And then it's ready to be put on my altar. So first off, I have this adorable Buddha statue. This doesn't particularly pertain to a specific element. It's just a personal touch that I really enjoy having. To represent the element of air, I have some frankincense incense. This is also a great thing to have in your water in form of an essential oil or incense that's really good for cleansing. Also just smells fantastic. This could also double as the element of fire. Additionally, to represent the element of air, I have two beautiful feathers that I have found. Um, I do not buy feathers from spiritual shops. I don't believe I need to. I don't have any reason to because I always find one. This white candle will represent one of the items that is in connection to the element of spirit. I do like to use this and light it, turn it on when I am offering a food offering or something like an edible offering. That's another thing that can go on your altar is offerings to those spirit guides, to your benevolent ancestors. And so you can light a white flame as uh, almost like you're calling them to meal, really, like how people call out and tell their family members lunch is ready or whatever. This is kind of how I take this white candle to be. A personal touch or could also qualify as spirit is a sound bowl.
has a cute little like felt stand for it. I actually have three things on here that will represent um, the element of spirit, but I also have crystals here. My hope is to take this one and make it a pendant. So uh, before I put these on, I will wash them in my water mix. Offerings are something I keep on my altar. So I actually have a dollar here that I keep on my altar. All of these are the last thing that are going to represent the element of spirit on my altar. And these are photos of my ancestors. Now, some people believe that altars should never be shown off and that they should be a highly private thing that only you has access to. However, if that were the case, well, then how would people learn? Would they just learn by hearing it? Or if someone else feels comfortable enough to bring them into their space? I choose to share this with you guys because I want you guys to learn. I want you guys to be inspired to create something that's wholly yours. And so another rule to take with a grain of salt if you don't feel comfortable sharing with other people, then don't. You can put your altar in your closet if you don't want people to look at it when you come in. But personally, I'm at a spot where I'm grown as fuck. And if someone sees my altar, they're going to see my altar. And I don't be bringing people around me or around my home that I don't trust. So I don't have that fear either. So again, take it how you will. But I'm showing you guys my altar and it is what it is. But I will not show you guys my ancestors photos. I do believe there is something good in privacy, but I will share just a cute little baby pic. <laughs> Other things I keep on or near my altar are my tarot and oracle decks. <laughs> and guys, I think that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my altar in a... Oh, the last thing is a seashell candle I made last night specially for my altar. So I'm going to get my altar in its final but not really final resting space for now. And I'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. <music> <laughs>